16代目のクラウン日本の歴史に重ね合わせればそれは明治維新ですご覧ください新しい時代の幕開けです Prepare to say goodbye to electric vehicles as Toyota is on the verge of introducing an engine like no other. This innovative engine, a Project Toyota, has been refining, is touted as the epitome of environmental friendliness. So hold on tight. We're about to witness a dramatic transformation in the automotive sector with Toyota's new engine poised to redefine the EV market. Incredibly, the engine Toyota is perfecting runs on water, marking a paradigm shift in engine technology. This initiative is somewhat of an extension of their current projects like the FCEVs, exemplified by models such as the Toyota Mirai. And their ventures into hydrogen powered combustion engines, including the recent 1.6 hydrogen three cylinder. Water engines have long been a tantalizing prospect for the entire automotive industry, offering substantial benefits over conventional engines and EVs. Despite numerous attempts, the dream of a reliable, water powered engine for everyday use has remained just out of reach. Now, Toyota is stepping into the spotlight with their state of the art water engine, ready to defy the norms and set new standards. Unlike most prior attempts, which were developed in sheds with limited resources, Toyota has adequate funding and can test the engine in all imaginable situations. How exactly does the water engine work? The engine itself is quite similar to the HHO generator, with only a few small modifications that make it more suitable for daily use in automobiles. The engine is quite similar to the hydrogen combustion engine featured in the Toyota Yaris GRH2, except that instead of using pre processed hydrogen, the engine processes it and separates hydrogen from oxygen through a chemical reaction. In essence, the engine separates the H2O molecules through the electrolysis process. Because hydrogen is held inside the water, hydrogen and oxygen are separated once the electrodes in the tank that contains the water begin releasing high voltages. There's no need for fully armored and extremely large tanks when it's held in the tank, as is the case with the FCEVs and hydrogen combustion engines, because hydrogen alone is extremely difficult to contain. The parallels between hydrogen combustion engines and water engines begin with the process of powering the vehicle. Hydrogen, like the compressed natural gas, is supplied to the engine. After being separated from oxygen and combust, the engine's overall operation is similar to that of CNG powered engines. The fuel injectors must be modified for compressed gas, and the cylinder heads, pistons, and valves must be armored, as hydrogen is very flammable, making detonation difficult, which is why stronger components are required. What are the long term environmental benefits? Well, to begin with, it emits nearly zero pollutants when compared to ordinary internal combustion engines, similar to EVs, while also being significantly more convenient than EVs. Actually, forget about it, it's more convenient than really any other engine type available. You can refuel it as long as you have access to diluted water, and it will cost you little to nothing. Furthermore, there will be considerably less demand for oil extraction because if the engine becomes popular, the only true branch of the entire industry where fossil fuels may be employed is in heavy machinery or huge power production units. Furthermore, there will be no need for rare metal extraction from the earth, which is currently one of the dirtiest processes in the entire car industry. If we compare water engines to hydrogen combustion engines and FCEVs, both of which are advertised as zero emission vehicles, we can see that they are considerably superior in this area as well. Water storage involves little to no work, whereas hydrogen storage requires far more thought, particular conditions, and most importantly, much, much more money. Because hydrogen in its pure state is a gas that is exceedingly difficult to contain and can readily escape from a vehicle's tank, if there's any sort of irregularity with it, the tanks will need to be armored, constantly monitored, and frequently maintained. In contrast, the fuel tank for water powered vehicles may theoretically be any plastic container. Furthermore, storing hydrogen outside of the car is a hassle since it requires optimal temperature conditions, must be entirely static, and must be completely unbreakable, all of which costs a lot of money. 
Distilled water, on the other hand, can be purchased at any well-stocked supermarket or, if you know basic chemistry, can be produced at home. Obtaining hydrogen in its pure form is also an expensive procedure, which, combined with the various challenges associated with gas storage, is why hydrogen hasn't yet caught on and probably never will. Producing and storing hydrogen is expensive, which boosts the price of the gas itself for the customer, prompting us to ask, why would you buy hydrogen cars if they're more expensive to buy and run than EVs and fossil-fueled vehicles? So, while water engines are incredibly green and logistically simple to use and run in theory, the issue remains, are they genuinely usable on a daily basis? Well, they are indeed. To begin with, they're not as weak as people may imagine as a water-powered engine is on par with most gasoline engines. In principle, they could be built more powerful than standard internal combustion engines because well, they can create up to three times the energy of gasoline engines. They're also significantly safer than other engine types because no highly combustible fuel is always stored within the vehicle, so there's no need to be concerned about the car catching fire or bursting like a bad fireworks display. They're also quite simple to manufacture as their mechanical designs are only slightly more sophisticated than normal gasoline engines. They are significantly easier and less expensive to construct than both EVs and FC EVs, and because of their nature, they would be an ideal option for motorizing developing countries that lack oil resources. In fact, an Iranian scientist decided to adapt his Peugeot 405 to run on water for this reason alone, and he was successful. Aladdin Kazemi, the scientist, was able to create a fully functional retrofit for his old car, transforming it into a remarkable technological marvel. Imagine what Toyota could achieve if a man in a shed could build a daily drivable, water-powered automobile. Water-powered engines are also extremely economical when compared to both gas-powered vehicles and EVs, as Kissimmee's own 405 averaged between 30 and 40 miles per gallon of water. Which is fantastic because the car's base petrol engine could never achieve such high figures. This means that water-powered motors might theoretically achieve 80-plus miles per gallon without being fully gutless, lowering the cost of running such automobiles even further than we previously thought. However, because there have been no mainstream versions of the engine type, and because no other automobile manufacturers are actively working on this engine type, we must ask, are water engines the future? So, as much as we'd want to see Toyota follow through on this engine, we doubt it will happen very soon, if at all. Even if they were working on the engine, they would most likely be doing so in complete secrecy, which is why there have been no public confirmations on the project. See you next time.